Hey everyone, and welcome to the start of a new travel series. Today, I'm at Manchester Airport, about to board a Cafe Pacific flight all the way to Hong Kong. My flight done depart till just after midday. It's only 9am now, so that gives me plenty of time to check in my bags. So I've checked in my bag at the oversight baggage section here. Because it was a soft bag, I can go through the regular Cafe Pacific check-in desk. So I'm just gonna head through passport control and get some breakfast. I made my way through security and now I'm gonna find myself some breakfast. So I've come here to the Amber Inn on the upstairs section in Terminal 2 at Manchester Airport. I've gone for the Amber Grill, which is basically just a full English breakfast. I've got a selection of bacon, hash browns, eggs, tomatoes, sausages, beans, and a black pudding. So let's try it, shall we? It's standard airport there, I think. But it's definitely what I need this time of the morning. So I've still got at least another couple of hours left before my flight departs. I'm just going to take my time eating this when I finish. I'm just going to walk around all the shops for a bit, get myself a bottle of water and find somewhere quiet to sit down. It's still obviously too early to get a gate yet, so I'm just going to relax. So I've finished my breakfast. It took all of about 10 minutes to eat it. It's only 10 past 10, so I'm just going to sit in here for about another 20 minutes before leaving and start to walk around a bit nowhere to go. So I've still got two hours before my flight departs. So I've finished my breakfast and now I'm going to explore all Terminal 2 has to offer. I finished walking around Terminal 2 and I thought it'd be a good chance to tell you why I'm actually going on this trip. A few months ago I actually won a competition through the Hong Kong Tourist Authority for a free flight to Hong Kong. It was called the World of Winners competition and they were offering half a million tickets to fly to Hong Kong from around the world. I entered and <laughs> what do you know it? I actually won a free flight to Hong Kong which was absolutely amazing. Normally I would have brought Matthew and Holly with me but I had to actually purchase separate tickets for them and the prices with Cafe Pacific aren't cheap. It would have been just over £2,000 for Matthew and Holly to come with me. Ordinarily I would have actually done that but the fact that we've actually booked tickets before I won this competition to China for next year, which includes Hong Kong, um, I decided it's just going to be a solo trip this time. £2,000 for tickets for something that they're going to be doing again next year. We just decided it wasn't going to happen this time. So it's going to be my first solo trip, <laughs> apart from we've worked for over 10 years now. So I'm looking forward to it, but I am a little bit nervous as well. So you guys are coming along for the ride. So we've got a gate, it's A10. So I'm going to head over there now and take a look at the plane. Right, I'm on my way to gate A10, taking the moving walkways because I'm a little bit lazy. I'm not really, just saving my energy for the flight. I'm assuming that's my plane outside there. I see a Cafe Pacific one and an Aer Lingus. And it looks like a Singapore Airlines one is just coming in as well. So it says 12 minutes to walk to the gate, but can't see that to be honest.
But with this taken off, it took about an extra 30 minutes to push back from the gate with a minor delay due to Kranagere's slot on the runway. Takeoff was really smooth. We're up in the sky. It's lovely and blue and sunny up here. The captain has just been on the loudspeaker to announce that the flight time today is going to be about 12 hours, which puts us getting into Hong Kong around quarter to eight tomorrow morning. He did advise there might be some turbulence in a couple of hours time, but he'll keep us updated on the flight. Anyway, I'm just going to sit back, relax, read my book and stare out the window for a few hours. I might even put a film on. There's quite a wide selection on the in-flight entertainment menu looking at all those movies, TV and even games on there, so there's plenty of choice. But as I said, I'm going to relax for a couple of hours first, it's going to be a long flight. Always get nice to look out the window though. It's just after two o'clock in the afternoon. We're just flying over Germany and they've come around to serve the lunch. I've gone for the minced pork with rice. We've also got some salami and cheese. We've got Hagen das cookies and cream ice cream, red roll and some cheese biscuits, etc. Hopefully it should taste nice and I'll let you know when I've finished eating it. As the airline meals go, that was really nice. I'd give it about a 7 or 8 out of 10. The minced pork and rice was really delicious. And I think the best part though was the Hacker Dots ice cream. Cookies and cream, one of my favourites. Anyway, that only took about 10 minutes to eat. We're still over Germany. When we're a bit of a cloud cover now, but earlier on you could actually see some snow top mountains, which was really interesting. I think once I take this away, I'm going to watch your film. I think it might be Indiana Jones from the Dial of Destiny. We're four and a half hours into the flight. I've just finished watching Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. It's dark outside, so I think I'm going to go to sleep for a bit, or at least try to go to sleep. But first, quick look around the bathroom. So, as you'd expect, we've got a toilet. We've got some soaps there, uh, sink, and that's about it. It's quite small actually, but what do you expect? It's an aeroplane. Anyway, I'm going to head back to my seat and try and get to sleep. It's got four hours left of the flight. I haven't been able to get to sleep yet, so I think tomorrow I'm going to be really tired. arrived in Hong Kong. It's been 17 years since I was last here so let's see if the place has changed a bit. All I need to do now is head through immigration and pick up my bags. Just need to fill in an immigration card before I go through passport control. And that's a better luck. As soon as I arrive, my bag turns up. All you need to do as soon as you come through passport control and collect your case, go to the Hong Kong Tourism Board and pick up your free 100 Hong Kong dollar voucher that you can use in the city. So I'm in the arrivals hall at Hong Kong International Airport and I'm looking for a shop A12, which is where I'm going to pick up my octopus card. 
If you're not familiar with what an octopus card is, it's basically like a UK Oyster card. So I can use it on the MTR or a subway or underground. Um, I just tap in and tap out. So I booked it by a company called Clue and it's come in preloaded with 50 Hong Kong dollars, which is roughly just over five UK pounds. I'm gonna add some extra on for that as well, probably a couple of hundred Hong Kong dollars and that should last me the week. And it's not only used just on the MPI, you can also use it for small purchases in a number of convenience stores as well. So let's look for the place I pick it up, shall we? So this is the OBS desk, it's A13, not A12. And that's where I've just picked up my octopus card. What I've decided to do on this trip as well is try out an eSIM for the first time. Usually when I travel abroad, especially to far-flung places, I normally buy a SIM card in the airport uh, so I can use the data and calls through that. But on this trip, I've used a SIM card from Aerolo. I'm going to try it out for the first time. And I'll let you guys know if it works. So far, as soon as I installed it back home last night, as soon as I arrived, I just clicked a few buttons and I'm starting to get data. So hopefully, fingers crossed, everything should be okay. So what I'm going to do now is head to the Disneyland Resort Hotel. There's two options I can do that. I can either take the MTR, which will take about 35 minutes and I'll be carrying my bags. And I'll also make two changes, even though it's really close. Or I can get a taxi. I think from what I've been reading, the taxi should be about 150 Hong Kong dollars, which is about 15 UK pounds. So I think to save the hassle, I'm going to get a taxi, which means I've got to find a local taxi because we're on Lantau Island. So I've got to look for a blue taxi outside. So let's go, shall we? And it looks like this is the way to the taxis. And I need to take the Lantau taxi, which here's the taxi I'm taking. It's a Lantau one. So the Lantau taxis are blue, so they just operate on Lantau Island, which is where the airport is. And it's also where Hong Kong Disneyland is. And I'm going to the Hong Kong Disneyland Hotel. So I've just scanned the QR code on the taxi information card on the board here while waiting. And it basically says the fare should be to Hong Kong Disneyland, 145 Hong Kong dollars. So there's a little bit of a queue, but not too much. Didn't take long. So I've just checked in and I've left my case with a bell service here and I'll pick it up later when I come back to the hotel. So I've checked in, I've dropped my bag off. I think it's time to end this episode here. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, my name is Mark and I make travel and theme park videos from around the world. And stay tuned for lots more content from Hong Kong, starting with Hong Kong Disneyland. next time on Travel Shorts Hong Kong.